What is up everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today I thought it'd be fun to take a look forward here in 2024, which sounds crazy because I feel like we just walked into 2024. And now I want to take a look ahead to some of the more notable and exciting releases in American whiskey to look forward to this year. On top of that, I will mention some of my personal requests for bottles I would like to see created and made available, maybe a couple of predictions, but no matter how ridiculous they sound, it should be, should be pretty fun. Stay right here, it's the Mash and Drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C from The Mass and Drum and welcome back to the show. Like, subscribe and help me hit that 100,000 subscriber milestone for 2024. Appreciate all the support. So before we start looking at some of the upcoming releases, I do wanna give some credit to two sources that really you know, can help everyone find some really good information on some bottles coming out um, in the future. And that includes breakingbourbon.com, great site with tons of info and their release calendar is a great tool to use to see what's coming down that pipeline. And secondly, the Instagram account called Coming Whiskey. So Jake over there who patrols the TTB website to find what new bourbon and American whiskey labels have been submitted for approval and he just simply posts them. So you could really find some good resources out there, but those are two of the best. I'll leave the links to follow them down in the description of the video. So as I go through these, I'll give some comments uh, about each of these releases as we go through them. So I'm gonna pour a little Michter's American whiskey here. It's light, it's easy, it's delicious, and um, there is a reason why I picked this bottle, which we'll find out a little later. All right, let's dive in. Now, as far as new bottles that were released each month, let's start with January, of course. So the first bottle is Old Forester 1924, which is a bottle I already reviewed. Now, this bottle has gotten a lot of mixed emotions, especially about the price point of being $115. So after I reviewed this bottle, you guys wrote a lot of comments uh, for the video, and a lot of people were really disappointed in that high price point, especially for the 100 proof, uh, the 100 proof point that it has, but also, when you compare it to bottles like Eagle Rare, Old Forester 1897, uh, McKenna, Henry McKenna 10 year, Knob Creek 12 year, the bottle just seemed to be a little bit too expensive for most folks. But I still, I still uh, believe that this bottle is gonna be bought up no matter what. In my opinion, I would not overpay for it. I think it's a good bourbon, it's not a great bourbon. I do like seeing a nice older age stated Old Forester on the shelf. Uh, hopefully eventually it stays on the shelf. Cause normally, like I've said before, really the only age stated products from Old Forester that we see is birthday bourbon, came to Kentucky and also the president's choice. Also coming up in January, we have Town Branch releasing their maple barrel stout finished bourbon, which Sounds interesting enough. I love stout beer, so I might be willing to try that one. Oh, but you know, I can't really give a, a big opinion on Town Branch because I just haven't had enough of it. However, I think this year I'll probably be diving into some more of the bottles from uh, from Town Branch. Next up is the Traveler Whiskey from Buffalo Trace, which already hit you know resale markets for a lot of money because anything that Buffalo Trace puts out, you know, people want to try to flip and make a lot of money on it, and I get it. Uh, but this bottle really got a lot of fame because of the connection with Chris Stapleton. I'm a huge fan of his music. I think he's got one of the best voices, if not the best voice. I could listen to him all day long, and I'm not really much of a country music fan, but I actually love his voice. Now, this is supposed to be a low price point, and I do think it's a blend of Barton whiskey, which is the makers of 1792, and also some Canadian whiskey. So it's a blended whiskey and it's supposed to be a very light and easy sipper. I know there's there were some rumors that people thought they had some of the Wheatley vodka blended in here, and I don't think that's the case at all. So uh, we'll see how that one you know turns out. I should be reviewing that one soon. And uh, finally in January, as far as what's listed, we have Wheel Horse Cigar Blend. Wheel Horse is a great distillery, and they're basically sourcing their stuff out of Green River Distilling. So if you like Green River, uh, what they're doing, Wheel Horse is a great budget pour as well, but looks like they're coming out with their own cigar blend with some different finishes on it. February, the big one from Michter's is gonna be releasing again, which is Michter's Sour Mash Celebration. Now this will be the fifth release ever of this ultra premium whiskey. Price for this one though, unfortunately, not only is it super limited, but price for this one is $6,000. As we look to April, we're gonna have a new Orphan Barrel bottle that's gonna be releasing. Now Orphan Barrel is the Diageo series and the whole story goes is that these are lost casts that 
you know, get found by uh, by Orphan Barrel, hence the Orphan Barrel name. Like these barrels are orphans and they're just being found and kind of loved again and then uh, repurpose for their brand. Now this Orphan Barrel is gonna be called Indigo's Hour and it's gonna be dropping, I think in April as or so it says. Unfortunately, it's only gonna be 90 proof. However, it does carry an 18 year old age statement, but the other caveat to this, uh, to this whiskey is, it's a Tennessee whiskey and yes, it is sourced from Dickel. All right, let's go to May where Blood Oath Pact number 10 has been announced and it looks again to be 98.6 proof. This is gonna be a bourbon finished in Cobb Frank and Merlot barrels, so two popular red wine varietals. And this does disappoint me. I really wanted the 10th one to be a higher proof, kind of a 10th anniversary edition at a time when I actually would rather have kind of a limited edition offering for this iteration. It would have been cool to have one over 100 proof, maybe call it, you know, blood poison edition or high fever edition or something like that. Uh, but to me, I don't think I'm buying it. These, these blood oats have been really hit and miss for me, mostly miss. So I don't know if I'm buying this one. Also in April, looks like we will have another batch of Rio from Penelope, the popular Amburana honey finished bourbon that pretty much had a cult following. I still have a little bit left over there, uh, but I think this will be another bottle that's gonna go really fast from Penelope. We kind of jump into August. It looks like we'll have the next Little Book Chapter 8, which looks to be a Sherry finish release. Jim Beam has worked with Sherry before, so I have high hopes for this one. Don't know the ages of the whiskey yet. Little Book throughout the years has tended to use either old and young whiskey kind of in the blend. More so young whiskey recently, but as you guys know, the Chapter 7 in retrospect was one of my favorite releases of the year. So I have high hopes for this one. Also in August, we have the Yellowstone Limited Edition for 2024. I'm not really a buyer on these anymore. Um, however, I will be interested on the finish they choose, which could be a rum finish. I I've heard there will be a rum finish. And I think they're also releasing a regular release Yellowstone with a rum finish. So not really sure what the LE is going to look like. However, at $100, $110, it's basically beam whiskey in the Yellowstone bottle at the higher age uh, with a little bit of a finish on it. I don't know. These have been a little bit underwhelming, but I'm willing to try someone's sample. I'll, I'll say that. As we get into September, I mean, this is the fall time now. This is when all the good stuff starts dropping. You have Bomb Burgers and Shanks from Michter's. You have the Four Roses Limited Edition. We don't have the details yet. Obviously, King of Kentucky, Birthday Bourbon. But the one I'm really interested in is the Bomb Burgers, the new Bomb Burgers for 2024, which I think is pronounced Cult Barrel Finish. It could be the Cult A Barrel Finish. I think it's a French word, so I'm probably butchering how to pronounce it. However, this is a very rare barrel type from France, which has, which has a uh, tight wood grain to it. It's mainly utilized to age the best French wines in the country of France. So utilizing this in the next Bomb Burgers for 2024 really fascinates me. Now, I love the Shanks from 2023 over the Bomb Burgers. And usually there are some unique finishes to those whiskeys that you don't really hear about unless you read the fine print or look it up on the uh, look it up on their website or something like that. Because like, you know, because 2023, they use some malted rye in the uh, in the recipe, which I think gave it a little bit of a different flavor profile, which I absolutely loved. The Shanks to me was a complete butterscotch bomb. But Bomb Burgers is the one I normally like because of that higher proof point. And this finish really interests me. And I think Michter's has a way of doing finishes right. So I'm excited about this one. Now, as we get into October, you have the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, Midwinter's Night Stram Act 12. That's another bottle I'm pretty much out on. Too many great port finish ryes out there in the market. Eh, I'm not really, I don't think a buyer in Midwinter's Night Stram anymore either. Uh, Parker's Heritage 18 will be out around this time as well. Now, we don't know what that is. Obviously, in 2023, we had a 10 year rye, but who knows what it could be this year? Will it be another weeded bourbon? Will it be a wheat whiskey? Will it be a single malt? Who knows what could come out of Heaven Hill? But another release supposedly coming out in October will be the Russell's Reserve Single Rick House Camp Nelson B. Now, I don't think October is going to be the actual release date. I think this will drop a little bit earlier. However, I'm really excited for this one. Obviously, you guys know that the Single Rick House Camp Nelson F was my bourbon of the year for 2023. Um, and Camp Nelson B barrels tend to be really good as well. I think I've had only one or two single barrels from Camp Nelson B. Also very different. I don't think they're as funky as the Camp Nelson F barrels. However, it has a chance to have a really good flavor profile. Also, you know, we don't know the ages of the barrels going into this one. But again, we're probably looking at another $300 release from Wild Turkey, unfortunately. So we'll see what happens with that one. But another turkey I'm excited for. 
All right, so let's talk about some bottles that I found that don't have a release date yet that I'm excited about, including the Barstown Bourbon Company Collaborative Series Copper and Kings Double Mistel Finish coming in at 91.9 proof. And I do believe that's gonna be a 10 year old whiskey. Now obviously anything with Barstown Bourbon Company, you're just not gonna be too sure of what's gonna be in that whiskey. Is it gonna be the Tennessee whiskey? Is it gonna be all Kentucky? They've been using Kentucky bourbon more and more, so hopefully that's the case here, but uh, we'll see. Ben Holiday, one of the best new upcoming brands coming out of Missouri is releasing their ancient cave collection called the Spiral Cut at 100 proof. And apparently, not much information on this one, but apparently it was just finished in a cave. So either like aged for a small portion inside of a cave. Now caves are usually cooler, so maybe they just had to, they wanted to put some more cooler air in it. I have no idea, that should be interesting. Also coming back in 2024 is the Blue Note 17 year barrel proof bourbon. Uh, this one looks like it's gonna be 111.6 proof. Now this is distilled in Tennessee, but I think from what I remember, this does not, I repeat, does not go through the Lincoln County process. So uh, I think a couple years ago or a few years ago, I had chosen Blue Note 17 years, one of my uh, bourbons of the year that year. I think, it, I think it definitely made a top 10 showing. However, um, I think what I liked about it is that it didn't have that Lincoln County process that you get from, uh, from George Dickel. So we'll see if that holds true this year, but that's a release I'm excited for. Looks like Bullet's gonna be coming out with a 90 proof American single malt. I've been saying it forever. American single malts are gonna start popping up from some of the big boys here as we go down the line, uh, and Bullet is no exception. Another bottle that people are excited about is the Elijah Craig Toasted Rye that should be coming out some point this year. 94 proof, we already have the Elijah Craig Toasted Bourbon, uh, but the Toasted Rye I'm actually more interested in, however, Toasted to me, if you guys watch my channel, I'm just kind of over the whole toasted thing. But if this is an affordable toasted rye, $50 or under, I'd probably be more interested. Speaking of toasted, Ezra Brooks is gonna be coming out with their own toasted edition. They're calling it their Stave Finish Collection, so be on the lookout for that. Now another bottle I'm pretty hyped for is a bottle from Lucky7 called The Colonel. This is a brandy cask finished bourbon. Supposedly over 130 proof, I think 132.1 is gonna be the number. I wish more distillers would do brandy finishes. I love brandy finishes. I've only had two or three that I've really, really loved, but man, when they hit, they hit great. I really think it's all dependent on that brandy cask you use and how well it matures that whiskey. But that brandy cask finish, I'm all over that in 2024. Just when you thought it was gone, it is back. It is the Maker's Mark Wood Finishing Series called the Heart Release, uh, coming in at 112.6 proof. I'm not sure, when I looked at the description, it looked like there were some stays that they have used before, but I think this is Maker's Mark just trying to keep their foot in the door when it comes to finished whiskeys. They don't do a lot of them, but this wood finishing series is where I think they really can use a little bit of ingenuity. Uh, not a lot of ingenuity comes from Maker's Mark, but I think this wood finishing series actually does that. And then on top of that, you have the Maker's Mark Cellar Age. Now remember, Maker's Mark Cellar Age is an annual release. Now this past year, it was a little bit over 80% of 12 year bourbon and the rest of it was 11 year bourbon. Who knows what those proportions and those ages could look like for 2024, but we will have another annual release of Maker's Mark Cellar Age, which I'm really excited about. You have New Holland out of Michigan coming in with a single barrel maple barrel bourbon at 111 proof. I love what New Holland's doing. They came out with a honey finish, which was absolutely delicious. They have these really high proof single barrel picks that I've had that are just absolute flavor bombs. So I'm interested in trying that one. Uh, New Riff is coming back with their High Note collection with their Bohemian Wheat Bourbon at 112 proof. Now, while I love what New Riff does, I'm more kind of partial to their rye whiskeys. Uh, you know, Wheaters, I'm not a giant fan of, but New Riff has a way of really utilizing and making the best uh, the best they can out of some newer uh, grain. So I'd be, I'd be interested in trying this one just because it's something I don't think I've ever had a Bohemian wheat bourbon. So why wouldn't I be interested? Looks like Penelope is gonna be releasing their estate collection. So we have a few bottles in the estate collection. We have a Founders Reserve, the Omega, the Private Select, and then we have some single barrels. I really don't know the details of what these estate collections will entail, but that's something to keep an eye out. Now, we've talked about Penelope being bought out by Lux Row, in turn, Ross and Swib, AKA MGP. So maybe these will be higher age barrels that they have access to now. Rabbit Hole coming out with the Fabio Spurbin, which is gonna be finished in American Tony Portcast, 105.8 proof. I don't mind Rabbit Hole, but I do not like Rabbit Hole's prices. I think they are extremely high for what they are, especially when you compare it to the other market. So if you're a Rabbit Hole fan, go for it. 
Um, unless this one is less than $100, I'm not buying it. Now we talked about the Ezra Finish Collection that's gonna have toasted staves. There's also gonna be one for Rebel. That's gonna be the weeded, uh, the weeded brother of Ezra. So Rebel out of Luxrail will also have a toasted stave. So a toasted weeder, which I'd probably be more excited to try that one. Next up are two big bottles and a curious one from, uh, from Wild Turkey. One of them being the Russell Reserve 15 year old bourbon because 13 wasn't enough. It'll be interesting to see the pricing of this one. I would assume that this is gonna be at least 250 to 300 bucks. We already saw the price increase of Russell's 13 going up to 150, $160 uh, the past year. So I would imagine even though it's only two years older, we don't know what the rest of those ages are in that bottle. It could be higher age stuff in there that will drive the price up. But I'm guessing anywhere from 250 to 350 for the Russell's 15, unfortunately. Another label that has also dropped is the next Wild Turkey Master's Keep, which is gonna be a 104 proof, 10 year old rye whiskey. Now I have gotten the, the honor of trying some of these really good rye casks at Wild Turkey right out of the barrel and some of them are just insanely special. Now I don't know if 104 proof is cast strength or not, I think we'll have to wait for more information to come out for the press release. It sounds like it could be a little bit lower, I think they usually are a little bit higher than that. If it's 300 bucks, I could already tell this is, might be a try before you buy for a lot of people because at $300 for a master's keep. These are just getting more and more expensive. The curious bottle from Wild Turkey is a Russell's Reserve honey infused straight bourbon. It's supposed to be only 90 proof, but about 10 years old, and I'm not really sure what the details here are. I'm not really sure what to think about this one, but if a Russell's Reserve comes out and it's honey infused, 90 proof, and 10 years old, I'm not really sure if that's gonna be the actual specs, but if that's the case and this bottle stays, you know, into that 50, 60 dollar, you know, price point, which I don't anticipate, I think this will fly off the shelf. Some other labels that I've seen pop up is another Bardstown collaboration with Amroot. Uh, Amroot is an Indian single malt whiskey company in India. Uh, they do a lot of incredible single malts. I know a lot of people aren't like huge fans of single malts, especially bourbon people. However, um, I happen to like Amroot because I just think their stuff is different, especially their sherry and their port finish stuff. I think it really gets bold and big and has a lot of flavor. Remember, it's really hot in India, so I think, I think the story is they have to age their casks underground to some level because the heat would just be too much in India. But as you can see, the blend details here, there's no Tennessee whiskey in it, but we'll see how this one works out. Now we did see the next Hardin's Creek corn whiskey pop up, which is an 11 year corn whiskey. Now Hardin's Creek is one of the newer labels under Jim Beam that highlights some of their more unique uh, bourbons and whiskeys that they have. And this one, no exception, Hardin's Creek corn whiskey, 11 year. This one, I'll be interested to trying depending on the proof. Old Forester is gonna be hitting us with another 117 series. This one from Warehouse I. And then this one I am super pumped up about, Corbin Cash, which was one of my newfound rye whiskey love bottles from 2023. They are releasing a 12 year double barreled French oak rye whiskey that I am, that might be like top five I'm most excited to try. I don't know how limited that's gonna be. Corbin Cash doesn't have a huge distribution. Probably not a lot of those bottles, but I, I want that one, bad. Two years removed from the Heaven Hill Heritage Collection 17 year, now we have the 2024 release, which would be the Heaven Hill Heritage Collection 18 year old. That 17 year won my bourbon of the year two years ago. Absolutely stellar, stellar bourbon. Um, I don't expect much less else from uh, this 18 year. This is one that will be really hard to get as these always are. Heaven Hill Heritage Collection is essentially Heaven Hill's BTAC. So these bottles I think could go right up against anything that you throw at them from the BTAC collection. They're really good. All right, so one more sip of my Michter's American Whiskey here. All right, so here are my bottles I wish would come back in 2024. I'm not necessarily saying they are gonna come back, but these are my, let's say my requests. First up is Booker's Rye. Booker's Rye, bring it back. Jim Beam. I know you guys have some really good rye whiskey aging. In those center cut locations in those Rick houses, bring back the Booker's Rye. We all want it. You know it. Stop making us wait for it. Woodford Reserve Double Oak. How come this has not happened yet? I've been saying it for years. Now, who knows? Maybe Woodford Double Oak, the cast strength, just doesn't taste that great. I mean, maybe that's why they never bring it out. But maybe we'll see it in a Master's Collection release. Maybe we'll see it in one of the 175s that come out at the gift shop. I don't know, just, just let us all try a Woodford Reserve double oaked at cast strength. Next request is this bottle right here, Michter's American, but 
I want to try this one to cast strength. Right now, this is what, 80, 83.4 proof. 83.4 proof for this one. Like I said, it's liquid vanilla ice cream. I would love to try this at cast strength. Dan McKee, um, master distiller over at Michter's was on the show uh, not that long ago, and it was a request we had. The chat told him, and he wrote it down. So, I don't know. This might have a good shot at happening, guys. Next up is Four Roses with a finish. Four Roses, we've seen all the blends happen. We've seen the different types of the recipes you use, blending the recipes, the LEs, the private barrels, all of it. Give us a Four Roses with a finish. Toasted, double oaked, something. Make it experimental, put it out in the market. Which recipe has the best finish or takes the finish the best? Whether it be a toast, whether it be a double oaked, whether it be a sherry, whether it be a port. Let us decide, I think it could be fantastic. Old Forester, forgot the 1924 that released. You know what we want? We want 1915. We want an actual blend of 1915, because right now everybody has to go out and buy two bottles. You gotta buy the 1920, you gotta buy the 1910. That's like 120 bucks of whiskey in order to make the 1915 blend. However, bring the 1915 already blended to the market. You know, throw it on the shelf for 50 bucks, instant hit, that thing would fly off the shelf. Knob Creek 12 cast strength. That thing came out, what, two, three years ago? It needs to come back. Jim Beam, Knob Creek 12 cast strength, bring it back. Sagamore, Sagamore was just bought by Di Sirono, which uh, is that sweet liqueur. I think there needs to be a Sagamore rye whiskey finished in Di Sirono casks or barrels. I'm not really sure how that works. Is Di Sirono even aged in a barrel? I don't know, but that needs to happen. Fill a barrel with some Di Sirono, let it sit for a little while, empty it, throw some of that Sagamore rye whiskey in there, and I think it could have something pretty good. How about an age-stated Wild Turkey 101? Now, it seems that the, the exports, the Japanese exports, and a lot of the exports overseas do see some of these age-stated uh, Wild Turkey 101s. Eight-year, obviously the popular 12-year that released uh, last year, or actually say two years ago with the, with the beautiful purple box. I think we deserve to get one of those, but again, at an affordable price. Put it on the shelf, a Wild Turkey 101, maybe a eight, nine, or 10 year old, eight stated product for under $100. I think that would be fantastic. My last crazy request, now bear with me here, because a lot of people are gonna be like, no, nah, I'll never do that. But I think we should bring back decanters. Why not? I'm not saying flood the market with decanters like they did back in the day, but I think with today's technology, the detail that could be created, we're not using lead anymore, so I think the whiskey would be safer to drink. I don't even care if the whiskey in the decanter is 86 proof. Just, I feel like with today's technology, we can make some really beautiful decanters. Wild Turkey decanters were some of my favorites. Jim Beam, even some of the old Michter's ones were beautiful. They were, they were works of art. Let's bring some of that back. Let's bring back the nostalgia to American whiskey. Come on, let's do it. And my last request is, you know, lower the pricing. What the hell's going on? Prices need to come back down. Hopefully that happens. That is my last request. So if you liked the video, hit that subscribe button below and please hit that like button before you take off. Also, if you haven't yet, find me on Instagram as well. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the list. Sound off in the bottles that you're excited for, ones you're not excited for, bottles that you're not hunting anymore because you're just sick of the high prices. Always love talking to you guys, and as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share with. See you next time right here on The Mash and Drum. Cheers.